I applied to the Ralph Bunch Summer Institute um, and I got in. And so it was at this program that I was made aware of PhDs in political science. I knew all of my faculty in undergrad had their doctorates uh, in political science, but no one ever explained the process to me, right? So it's if you get a degree, undergrad degree in political science, you're going to law school, you're going to get an MPA, you're going to get a master's in public policy. Those are just kind of the traditional pathways um, for an undergrad in public opinion. We were exposed to this entire different life of what it's like to get your PhD in political science, what kinds of coursework uh, are you going to have to do, um, writing reaction papers, things of that nature. There's also a really large uh, recruitment fair where they have schools, graduate schools there, um, where they talk to you about their programs. So uh, it wasn't until that program that I was really made aware that I could be a political scientist and it was some pathway that I could, I could put all of my interests together into a cogent career that was not necessarily law school or becoming a lawyer. Um, where I could still be passionate and quite possibly even turn that passion into profit. <laughs> I think that's true of a lot of students that end up uh, in that program. Like had it not been for the Ralph Bunch Summer Institute, I know I, I wouldn't be a political scientist. I'd probably be doing something else. Um, and so I'm very grateful, eternally grateful for that program because of what it's done for my life and I think the lives of many others. A lot of times graduate students don't leverage uh, guest speakers in the way in which they could and should. So I would probably say, you know, try and get those one-on-ones, try and get those lunches, try and get those dinners, and try to develop relationships with people because you're going to need those relationships in the future. I think that I want my legacy, my research, my teaching, my service, the students that come in my classes, um, when they leave to try and understand you know, all of these really intricate details and facts about what have happened, what's happened in this, in this country and try to you know, do things to make it better um, or to consider alternative perspectives that they've never considered uh, to date. And so I'm hoping that through the things that I write, through the courses that I teach, um, that I can get people to understand at least, even if that's not your lived experience, why someone might feel or why someone might think a certain way, especially as it pertains to uh, race relations, and at least develop a certain level of empathy um, that I think uh, might be lacking right now. Um, something dealing with like race and reconciliation uh, so we can start dealing with again the ideas behind the maintenance of racial hierarchies and start to break them down as opposed to just throwing legislation at it and thinking that the issues uh, will go away. I think some of the most challenging things that we're facing right now is that people just seem to be polarized in a number of issues, a number of groups, whether that's um, partisanship, whether that's race, whether that's religion. And so I think some of the things that we can do as political scientists is to try and understand how people's attitudes differ from our own um, and to also understand like how those attitudes and behaviors might, how those attitudes at least, their values, the way you grew up, how that might influence your political behavior. So I think it's just providing a greater uh, understanding or getting to the like why. Um, and so that will help us understand the what. Uh, and I think that that's what we need to do just across the board. And I think that's a, a challenging issue that we're facing. Um, right now because we all do seem to be, there seems to be a greater level um, of people polarized on a number of different identities. There's so much. So, of course, the opportunity to network and meeting up with people from grad school, meeting up with people from different programs, then meeting their friends or the people, their colleagues that are in their departments now and getting the opportunity to hang out and talk about you know, research and completely geek out, nerd out with people that are like-minded for a few days um, is, I think, the greatest. Uh, and I, I love coming to APSA just for that reason. So it's really refreshing um, to talk to people about, about your scholarship, to meet new people, 
um, and to just have a space for four days where you can go and and learn what's happening in cutting edge research so you can take those things back to even your classroom. Um, so all of those things I think are, are really useful. Yeah, love APSA. <laughs>